how do you think Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder at Amazon.com, currently right now the number two richest man in the world, makes his money? Is it salary? What exactly is it? Well, in this episode, I'm going to share the answer to those questions as well as the three different types of income that you can make so therefore you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire in this episode of the 7 Figure Squad happening in 3, 2, 1. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago and home of the Seven Figure Squad. And so in this episode, I'm gonna break down the three different types of income. But before I do that, I also wanna share with you from my favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, how Robert Kiyosaki discusses how people make money in America. So let's begin. By the way, stick around because again, I promised you how Jeff Bezos gets paid in terms of salary and as a bonus, if you really stick around, I'm gonna share with you the type of salary that Elon Musk, the CEO of founder SpaceX and Tesla, how much salary they make. Now remember, Elon Musk is the number one richest person in the world. He just passed up last week. Jeff Bezos is now the number two richest man in the world. But towards the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you what salary these two gentlemen make. So again, in my favorite book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, the book that absolutely changed my life, Robert Kiyosaki had uh, talked about, again, in the second book, Cash Flow Quadrant, how people make money in this country. The first way, they make money as an employee. Second way, they work for themselves as self-employed, okay? One's got a W-2, the other one's an independent contract, or uh, uh, they get paid a 1099, okay? So now 90% of people in America make their money on this side of the quadrant. Now, let me ask you this question. Are most people in America financially free and financially independent? Are most people in America living, sadly, paycheck to paycheck? Well, 90% of people are making their money right here as an employee or working for themselves. They have a job or they own a job. They're either, uh, for example, a teacher or they own a consulting firm. They're a lawyer to law firm or they own their own, they're a partner of their own law firm. Uh, um, they, they are an engineer working for a firm where they can be employed as an engineer or they own their own engineering firm. So either they have a job, W-2 salary and benefits, or they work for themselves and they create their own salary and benefits as uh, being their own boss. So 90% of people make their money right here. Now the opposite side, the opposite side of this quadrant is business owner and an investor. What am I talking about? Listen, when I went to school, how many of you guys took a weird class called home economics class? What did you learn in high school, whether you took home economics class in grade school, junior high, or high school? Do you remember those home economics class? Well, I remember my home economics class pretty clearly because every time we passed up the students that were taking the home economics class before we took it, I always smelt baking, them baking cakes. I always smelt cookies in the oven. They're like, well, yo, what class is that? They're cooking food. They said that's home economics class. But when I got into home economics class, it's all about cooking, uh, maybe even sewing, but it wasn't about economics. Like, where was the economics in the home economics? But I realized through the school system, due to lack of financial education and financial exposure, most people never learn how to make money on this side of the quadrant, which is becoming a business owner, okay? or becoming an investor. And Robert Kiyosaki discussed being a business owner outside of just being your own boss. He talks about having a system and a process running your system. And you have 500 plus more employees, brand ambassadors, independent contractors working for your business because systems and processes, not talent, running and helping you make money. And as an investor, basically, you're just creating money. You're printing money because you're investing in companies, you're investing in businesses, and boom, they make money. Now, here's the reality. Here's reality, 10% of people in America make their money this way. So 90% of people in America make their money as an employee or self-employed, yet many people in America are living paycheck to paycheck, and 10% of people in America make their money this way. Well, there's a saying there, the rich get richer. Why? Because they know some things. So when I realized this coming out the military, I realized it coming out the Marine Corps that, man, I want to go from working for Uncle Sam, I want to be rich one day. I need to follow what rich people do. So let's get right into the three different types of income that people make. The three different types of people that income make, right? If you look at this quadrant and you look at, we project it here on how you can make money in 2021, how you can make money for the rest of your life, how you're going to spend the rest of your life making money. So therefore you can get your life, your time back in control under your grips versus the grips of somebody else. So first way, earn income, pro and con to earned income, earned income. Okay. Earned income means you earn it, right? You trade time for dollars, 
right? It's the easiest way to make money. I remember my first job as a, as a 14, 15 year old downtown Chicago. I was a bicycle messenger, right? I've, you know, I, I delivered um, uh, packages. I delivered money. I delivered copies from a printer. This is before email and fax machines. I'm really dating myself, but I was a, I was a messenger. I delivered packages from one law firm uh, uh, to another law firm or from, from this um, printer to a law firm where uh, we worked with a lot of uh, attorneys when I was a bike messenger. Again, this is before the days of fax machines and emails and uh, uploadable PDF documents, but I used to deliver stuff, right? But thing here, it's the easiest way to make money in our country. You trade time for dollars, you fill out a job application, hopefully somebody hires you, boom, you got a job. Uh, and if you want to get paid more money, just increase your skills. Uh, and a lot of people say, well, go to school, increase your marketability, get a degree, get a certification. What that does is increase your, your skill set. So therefore, hopefully, you get paid more money. Pro to that, of, in terms of earning income, the three different ways to make money, it's the easiest, okay? Uh, here's a con, though. You got to trade your time. You got to trade your 40 hours a week. You got to trade your 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week, whatever. You got to trade your time to get money. You're trading time for dollars. So in other words, you know the saying that time is money? Yes, if you're thinking as earned income. The downside to this, well, is your income here is capped. Because if you're not making money by checking in or clocking in, you're capped at your income. They tell you you're worth 15 bucks an hour, you're worth 20 bucks an hour, you're worth 25 bucks an hour. Even if you worked overtime, there's only so much time that you can give up in exchange for money, so therefore your income also is linear. In other words, you clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out, linear income the same way. When I was in the military, guess what we were celebrating? Hey guys, the military budget got passed, we got a two, to a 3% increase in pay. We're jumping, yeah, we're getting paid more money. How many of you sit down for an annual review? What has been your increasing annual pay after an annual review or the new year begins? What is your raise for the new year? Is there a raise because you went through the pandemic? Is there? If you are getting a raise, and if you even have a job through the pandemic, well, amen to that. What did we discover during the pandemic? You're either an essential worker or non essential worker. They determined whether or not you can earn income at your present employee or former employer. Again, back to the cons. What did most people discover last year? They were exposed when it came to this. So, which came to the understanding, well, how do I make more money without having trade time for dollars? Well, there's two different ways. The second way to make money, the second type of income in America is you earn what they call passive income. Let me share with you a specific definition of passive income. It reads like this. Passive income is earned from rents, royalties, and stakes in limited partnerships. In other words, you have ownership in a business. You have ownership in real estate investments. You have ownership with, with a particular asset that kicks you out passive income. In other words, you don't necessarily have to clock in, clock out to earn it. This is coming in because you own something. Ownership is what we say in our office. Now, back to my original example of uh, earned income. When I was in the military, I served eight years in the Marines. When I got out, I had three jobs. I was a Jeep and Lube Hood technician, I was an Olive Garden servant, and I was a lifeguard at YMCA. And one of the jobs I also picked up was learning sales. I was selling protein for Metrex, uh, uh, Metamycin protein. I learned how to make phone calls, and I learned, in, uh, I learned how to use Goldmine and CRM software, customer relation management software. But guess what I didn't have in that process? I would never learned how to create passive income. So in other words, when I left those jobs, no money, but passive income said if you own something, and, and this is where I share in a previous video how I took a $500 investment to create my own business, and I turned it into a $45 million business over a 12-year period, or more specifically, over a 12-year period, I created a $3 million business, but in the last six years, I created a $42 million business. So I shared this video in a previous episode, but I started then creating passive income. Here's some of the pros and cons. Pro to passive income, big time, you get your time back. Big, the big time benefit. That's why, that's the dream. I want passive income. How many times have you heard someone said, I would love some passive income, because why? Because it's not active income. Active is like earned income. I have to actively earn it. Passive says, if I own it, then I can earn income from it. That's why people, that's the joy, that's the dream for a lot of people. And the benefit of a, a type of passive income, it could potentially build a life of itself. It can grow and it can compound over time. Now, here's a condo. Sounds great, but here's the cut. This is why a lot of people don't ever build passive income. They have no focus and they have very little money to get it started. 
For me, I took $500. For some people, think they, they start a franchise, they start a business, they put 10, 20, 50,000, $100,000 into creating passive income. That's an option. Uh, that's a road that let many people follow. A lot of people have to put in some upfront work. There's a whole lot of work into building some passive income, a whole lot of credit that you have to build, a whole lot of capital that you have to come up with. And lots of times, well, man, I can find ways to put no, no money down, no money down. Okay, awesome. But you have to create your skill set to do so. There's ways to have very little money or no money down to build passive income. But those are more the minority than the majority. But again, the pro and the con, you get your time back, starts to compound, taking life of its own. The cons, if you don't have any focus on it, lots of times people say this when it comes to passive income. I want to create multiple streams of income. So therefore, I can build that one solid passive income. No, no, no. Listen, here's my, here, here's my, here's my thoughts on it. You create a river, right? You create a river of income first, a river of cash flow, coming down, money, making money, a river of cash flow, and then it diverts to create streams. You see what I mean? You've got to create that river first. That's wide and deep to create streams. That's how you create a solid passive income if that's a route that you're going to choose for your future third one portfolio here's a definition of portfolio income it reads like this portfolio income is income from dividends interest and capital gains from stock sales so in other words you own stocks bonds mutual funds creating portfolio income you have a portfolio of stocks bonds and mutual funds you may uh, uh, up your game you might buy it if you might have a fund that owns multiple companies that provide a return on your investment in their companies for example one of my favorite guys that does this is a guy named Mark Lissamonis who hosts a show called The Profit I did a reaction to his coaching to other entrepreneurs but I love his stuff he's the CEO of Campy World but he invests his own money to rescue businesses to create jobs, to create opportunities, and obviously to make money. In return, guess what he gets? Portfolio income from his return on investing in businesses. Here's some of the pros and cons of portfolio income. Pro, it's exponential. Unlimited income. You can make a ton of money with portfolio income. You get an opportunity for what the rich do in terms of rich getting richer. Why? They make money through their portfolio. How many times have you crossed somebody and say, hey, what's in your portfolio? What stocks, bonds, you meet with the app? It's a fancy word when you're hanging around people with money. What's in your portfolio? What type of stocks do you own? You flip over your app, your, your trading app, or whatever you have, your, your banking information, and you show people, boom, I got this ticker symbol, this ticker symbol, this ticker symbol. It's rich people talk for, I own stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Okay, the cons to this. This includes you embracing financial risk. Because risk means you potentially could lose your money. You can't lose your money. Also, the downside to this, just like passive income, you need some capital to get started with, and you need to do your research. You know, uh, research is a very big thing for a lot of people investing in a portfolio or earning passive income. Because sometimes that research either creates an opportunity or exposes a risk for you not to put your money there. So research is a very important thing when you're looking for portfolio income. And there's, there's so many papers out there, people that offer researching newsletters for, for people who are stock investors. Why? Because they want to get a tip on what to invest in and what not to invest in, what to uh, uh, double down on and what to avoid. And as a personal example to all that, here's a couple of things that I've earned uh, stocks, bonds, and uh, mutual funds through. There's a couple of investments that we've earned. One is through stock ownership of PHP Agency, which our guys earn through performance in the company, as well as a, a liquor company that uh, my wife and I invested in, Uncle Nearest Whiskey. Great story about this, but there are two examples of portfolio income right here in my office. Physically, I can share with you by owning stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, or in this case, earning specific stocks of companies as they grow and evolve in their maturation of a business. So when I'm looking at the dividends that PHP has paid our guys, guys that are building their business, guys that have agency, they're building their agencies, double digit returns on dividends. Now I want to look at that and I said, look, let me look at a company like IBM. What did IBM pay dividends to their shareholders? It's only single digits. So again, it depends on what type of ownership you have, what type of uh, stock you own inside your portfolio that's going to give you portfolio income. Now, here's the crazy part. One thing I didn't uh, uh, share with you is that the crazy part about earned income is this. The more money you make here, guess what? the more taxes you pay. So let's say you make 50,000, 100,000, 150, 250, a million dollars a year. You get taxed more the more you earn, okay? Now the crazy part about passive income and portfolio income, there's certain limitations 
of what you can get taxed on in passive income because you have offset, you have deductions. So in other words, you make money, but you might have other things like deductions you can offset taxes on by having passive income or portfolio income, assuming long-term capital gains tax or dividend tax, you're capped out at 20%. Up here, the more money you make, 20, high 20s, 30s. Here, maxed out. So the crazy part is, is I study rich people's income tax returns. It, some of the... <laughs> Some of the politicians that you study because they submit the tax returns and be voted into, into Congress or voted into the presidency, they submit the tax returns. And I'm reading them. Guess how much money they make in terms of earned income? Very little. Guess how much money these guys earn in terms of passive income, portfolio income? A lot. Mitt Romney makes millions of dollars through passive and portfolio income. How much money does he make through earned income? Zero. Take a look. If you Google Mitt Romney tax returns, you can download his tax returns. It'll show you right there how he makes his money. It's one thing to be rich. It's another thing to know what you make, but more importantly, what you keep. Also, when it comes to making money, is how you're making your money. So therefore, you live the type of quality life you want to live. So therefore, you're not ran by a corporation. You're not ran by your business. You run your business. You drive your career if that's the path you want to go into. Now, this takes me to answer the question I started at the beginning of this video is how much salary does Jeff Bezos earn? He's the CEO founder of Amazon.com. You want to know his salary? Here's his direct salary. Check this out. Three, two, one. $81,840 as salary. As salary. The second richest man in the world only gets paid a salary of, of $81,000 thousand dollars so how does he become the second wealthiest man in the world hello ownership of his company amazon.com through passive and portfolio ownership and income to top that up the guy that passed him up last week to be the number one highest richest man in the world is elon musk the ceo founder of tesla and spacex guess how much salary he earns as a ceo founder of tesla ready for this three Two, one. He gets paid zero dollars in salary. <laughs> zero dollars in salary. He's on a compensation plan to have millions of shares that he can have the option to purchase. Okay, that he has the option to purchase as part of his portfolio. Right? And what happens is you earn income through a portfolio, so you own limited on the taxes that you pay according to today's IRS tax code. See, the reason why the rich get richer because they have access to information or exposed to things that many of the people that traditionally went to school never learned. So with that being said, please ask yourself these three questions as it pertains to you figuring out what type of income you want to earn today, now, this year, and for the rest of your life long term. See, that's part of wealth building too as well. You just don't think short term. You want to think long term. See, a lot of times people think the easiest way to make money is not the best way to make money long term. It's easy right now. Initially short-term, but long-term thinkers are usually the richest people. So ask yourself this question. Three questions I want to ask yourself. Number one, what type of income do you want to be making? What type of life do you want to live? The second question I want you to ask yourself is this. What is your game plan to get there? Do you have a step-by-step -step and duplicatable process you can repeat over and over and over? Do you get excited about your business? Be excited about your portfolio. Be excited about where your money is going so it can work for you. The third question I want you to ask yourself is this. Do you have someone in your corner to teach you and save you mistakes? Who do you have counseling you on your decisions? Who's in your corner has been there, done that? Not somebody's trying to figure it out just as much as you are. There's a saying by Einstein. He says, a problem cannot be solved in the same level of consciousness in which it was originally created. Those you have to have somebody pulling you up to the next level with wisdom, knowledge, experience. These are the type of things you want to have sprinkled into your life. So they're for you for the rest of your life. Let's assume another pandemic hits us. Do you want to be affecting you the way it affected many people in 2020? Or forget the pandemic. Let's say you just get laid off your job or, or sadly you might have a change in health. Do you want to make sure that you're not dependent upon one style of income, one type of income? Or do you want a multitude of ways to create income. Listen, I'm, a, I'm a, an average kid from an average and an ordinary neighborhood. I don't have a college degree. Nobody gave me nothing. Nobody gave me a credit score. Nobody gave me a you know, million dollars to start a business. But through earning income, through my, my job in the military, learning sales, I learned entrepreneurship. 
I took a $500 investment, built a $45 million company out of it. And through this one process, I started to earn money now through different streams called portfolio income. But this is a gradual process for many of you. And some of you, thank God you have the gift of YouTube. You have access to people making money, been there, done that. And if you don't have anybody in your corner and someone doesn't hand you a blueprint, well, if you haven't done so already, <laughs> that's why you gotta subscribe to the Seven Figure Squad. And once you're done subscribing and all that, make sure you watch these two videos here. Number one, how to crush it in 2021. And the second video I want you to watch is how to build confidence as an entrepreneur. So as I wrap stuff up, drop your thoughts, drop your questions, drop your feedback. How are you gonna make your money? Matter of fact, answer this question. In 2021, I will make my money with blank income. Long term, I will be making my money through blank income. Is it earned income? Is it passive income or portfolio income? Put it in the comment section below. Let's grow. Let's crowdsource your answers so that we can figure out what type of mentality we have here as part of the Seven Fear Squad as you grow to 50,000 subs, 75,000 subs, 100,000 subs, 250. We want to grow together. And by the way, I'm just looking forward to one day. When everything starts opening back up, we got to look forward to meeting many of you from offline to online in one of our big events. So with that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, please click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, happy 2021 for you guys. And hopefully you start sprinkling in many different ways for you to make income, to solidify your income. So therefore you can invest in things to manifest the things and the dreams and the life that you really want to live. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.